enrolled for a law degree at the University of Venda and during his time Amanda during his time at the University of Venda he was president of the Student Representative Council known as SRC he was also the chairperson of the South African Student Congress in Limpopo. This is the leader who never rested. Since 13 years, he was there working tirelessly for the organization. He achieved a practical legal training degree from the University of South Africa in 2006. In 2008, comrades, I want you to listen to this. I know majority of you, you are still at school. Just listen so that you get encouraged and go and complete your degrees. In 2008, he obtained a postgraduate certificate in corporate law from the University of South Africa. Later on, he received a postgraduate certificate in banking law and the financial markets. Lamula acquired an LLM in corporate law from the University of Pretoria. He attained a postgraduate certificate in telecommunications policy and regulation and management from Vets University. Listen, comrades, listen. Listen. Amanda, can you listen to this? Because majority of you who are here, you are still very young. He holds two master's degrees from the University of Pretoria. Lamula, Comrade Lamula started his law career as a lawyer at TMN Komu and Associates in 2006. Later on, in 2009, he was employed as a manager of the Govenbeki local municipality. He was the director in the office of the Mpumalanga MEC for Culture, Sports and Recreation from 2009 until 2011. Shortly after 2011, he briefly served as the acting spokesperson for the Mpumalanga Premier, Comrade David Mabuza. He is a former deputy President of the African National Congress Youth League. Under the stewardship of President Matamera Cyril Ramaphosa. And after 2019 elections, Comrade Lamula was then deployed. Comrade Lamula was then deployed to serve at national parliament. Uh, he's now holding a portfolio of Minister of Justice and Correctional Services. Can, can you listen, comrades? So it means wherever you are, if you misbehave, if you, you, you conduct yourself in such a way that you call the law enforcement agencies, you must know that as a member of the ANC, you are not assisting Comrade Lamula to run that department diligently so. So we must behave, comrade, in support of comrade Lamula. We must not be the ones arrested. We must
must be saving our people. Ni mingi kil profile yali daraya hina. Mai wana kuri yi yi qualifier a very hot slogan as we welcome him to come and address us. Let's get a hot slogan as we welcome our leader to come. So the leadership, the leadership of Kosatu are requesting to be released for, to finalize for their preparatory meeting in preparation for tomorrow. Can we get that slogan?
Manda. Wetu. Matimba. Aina. Manda. Asu. Mata. Haruna. Viva AC Viva. Viva. Viva Kosatu Viva. Viva. Viva SACP Viva. Viva. Viva President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa Viva. Viva. Viva President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa Viva. Viva. Viva Stan Matabata Viva. Viva. Viva Stan Matabata Viva. Viva. Viva Chitereke Matibe Viva. Viva. Viva Chitereke Matibe Viva. Viva. Thank you very much, comrades. And thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Florence uh, Razlan, the Deputy Provincial Chairperson of the ANC, for such a flowering uh, introduction. <laughs> we, we grew up in front of her here, ourselves and uh, Comrade Udere, so she knows us better. The members of the PEC, as led by Comrade Florence, all the members of the REC, led by Comrade uh, Matibe and the uh, Regional Secretary Comrade uh, Ruzani Ludere, and all members who are present here from the REC, the leadership of COSATU that they've just uh, exited going to prepare for their meeting, we also understand because uh, we were, I was late in particular. And I know that uh, the president has set a tone for all of us to start on time, to arrive on time. And for that, I'm going to apologize profusely. We got lost because we exited uh, from the Kruger National Park at the Pafuri Gate. But uh, it was also fortunate because we received the memorandum after exiting the gate from a taxi driver because there was no network. We now had to ask for the route. And the taxi driver, before he could give us direction, or would say, hey, hey, bad way of a minister, and goes to So we, we are already telling the provincial leadership, but I've seen that there is work happening on the road. And that is the reason that there's got lots of stop and goes uh, the road from the Pafuri Gate up until Chufudu. We also want to recognize the leadership of the SACP that is here, the leadership of Sanko that is also here, the newly elected leadership of the ANC Youth League in the region. And we also want to congratulate them for a Congress of the Youth League and wish them all the best to convene a provincial Congress and also the National Congress of the Youth League. The ANC the ANC dearly needs the ANC Youth League to come back in its foot. The leadership of the ANC Women's League, present, led by the RTT, and all the fraternal organizations, all members of parliament present, executive mayors, speakers of municipalities and councillors, comrades and compatriots. We are here today to commemorate the life of a giant, a colossal, a person of unmatched integrity, a selfless leader of the ANC, Oliver Reginald Tambo. His life embodies the selfless values and characteristics of the ANC. And we should use this commemoration to reflect about the past, but also to speak about the current and the future of the organization. Because commemorations of this nature, if not used correctly, we may only bask on our former glory as a liberation movement, but do not plot about the future. Therefore, the organization will die. But we need to take lessons from Tambo, from his leadership skills, to propel ourselves to go forward so that we continue to renew the ANC to be an organization of the people. And that is what Tambo stood for and wanted to see 
of the ANC. O. R. Tambo was an agent of renewal since his membership of the youth league and his membership of the ANC. He was an agent for renewal in the ANC. He was an agent of renewal in the youth league itself. When they came up with ideas, the sole aim was to propel the ANC to go forward. And this is a lesson that all of us as members today can learn from that life of O.R. Tambo. He led many phases of the ANC. The first phase that he led was the formation of the youth league. That led to radicalize and ensure that the ANC becomes a mass-based organization. His generation of O.R. Tambo, his generation of Lutuli, his generation of Walter, of Walter Sisulu, I'm sorry, not Lutuli, Walter Sisulu, his generation of Anton Lembede and Nelson Mandela. It was a generation that spoke to, to ensure that the ANC become militant and become a mass-based organization. He did not end there. They swelled the ranks of the ANC at a very young age to take over its leadership positions across the country because they understood that as agents of change, they need to participate in its leadership roles and also in shaping its theoretical perspective. It was against this background that the defense campaign program of the ANC became the defense campaign program of the youth league became a defense campaign program of the ANC. It was a generation that also led the ANC to form various pillars in all its pillars of the struggle. He saw it all, O.R. Tambo, from a mass-based organization also to one pillar of the struggle, the one of the armed struggle. He was also part and parcel of the leadership of the ANC when the young structures of the youth league fought for the formation of Mkonto Wesizu under Nelson Mandela, O.R. Tambo is one of those that supported the formation of Mkonto Wesizu. This led to a second pillar of the struggle being adopted by the ANC. He also did a lot of international work when the ANC was unbent. So you can see in all pillars of the struggle, you can find his footprints, you can find his work, you can find his hand and also his intellectual contribution. He participated also in the theoretical framework in 1948, the Murogoro Conference, the strategy and tactic when it was first adopted. He was one of the leaders of the ANC that understood that revolution without theory is a lost cause. The ANC adopted the strategy and tactic under also his guidance. He participated also to shape and also renew the ANC when Hani led a memorandum, a march which was well known as the Hani Memorandum. This also changed the ANC to renew itself, to look in terms of self, self, selfless service to the struggle, but also to look into its own internal organization, to change its character, to also deal with various tendencies that were beginning to creep in, that were affecting the prosecution of the National Democratic Revolution. So he led the ANC during one of the most trying and difficult times. He was also a leader of the ANC who led into the transition prior to 1990 and 1994. He was already leading the transition, preparing the ANC to govern the country. He led it in all its formations that I have mentioned, but he also prepared the ANC to govern the country from the Harare Declaration up until we adopted a document in our first policy conference in the country called Ready to Govern. You can find his footprints there. He, he envisaged and led and shaped us that when we go into a democratic South Africa, this is how we are going to govern the country. So that they must know that the ANC was not just an organization of non-thinkers, but an organization of thinkers who gave theory 
and a perspective of how a democratic South Africa is going to look like. O.R. Tambo presided over all these faces. And this gave him experience and foresight to warn the then leadership of the ANC and its membership. And he told them that, comrades, if you thought that waging a struggle was difficult, wait until you attain power. You will realize that it is more difficult to maintain power than to wage the struggle. I think we are living today. <laughs> Our current generation is a living proof of how difficult it is to now prosecute the National Democratic Revolution in a democratic society, to maintain power, to deliver services to the people, to also serve without interest. Because this generation, they did not have all this budget that ourselves are seeing. They were living from donations. They did not have all these laws that are governing us today. But you will never find in any history books and all the commissions that the ANC has formed that had anything pointed at O.R. Tambo. With no laws, just policies and governance within the ANC, there was no PFMA to guard him. There was no Auditor General who was looking at O.R. Tambo. But he knew that he has to serve the people selflessly. He understood that if he stole the monies of the ANC that were aimed to advance the struggle, we may never achieve freedom. Hence, he served without any selfish gain. All his interest was to see us achieving freedom. <laughs> and guarded by the NPA, and guarded by the Auditor General, and unguided by all the laws that have guarded us today. Tambo did not need all those to do what was right and what is good for the ANC. It is a generation worth emulating because they were selfless, they stood true to the values of the ANC. Even during the most difficult times, they stood firm in their conviction. When they expelled the Gang of Eight because of ill-discipline, them wanting to define themselves outside the program of action of the ANC, Tambo stood firm. Tambo was very clear that a soldier or anyone who wants to prosecute the revolution must stood by the values and the characters of the ANC. Hence, he was very firm on the issue of the Gang of Eight. Although at first he was reluctant, but when the verdict came out, he understood that to run an organization, you need disciplined members of the organization to prosecute the revolution. That was O.R. Tambo. And we want to remember him as a person who stood firm, who was selfless, but also who wanted to see to the end their generational mission of freedom in their lifetime. He was unfortunate not to see it, but at least he saw the period of transition because he was no longer with us when we saw the real freedom ourselves and the other people of his generation. But he has laid the foundation. It is these lessons that ourselves as this generation must carry and take forward. Wherever we are, or wherever we are deployed as cadres, and in our prosecution of the revolution in the African National Congress, so that we are able to serve the people of this country, so that we continue to respond to what former President Tabumbeki characterized in his lesson or in his lecture of O.R. Tambo in 2012 at the University of Fort Hill. He said the following. President Becky went on to define eight points, which are the legacies of apartheid and colonialism, and which Tambo wanted to see dismantled. One, the radical weakening of any sense of African identity. 
and the destruction of the traditional value system identified as Ubuntu. Two, a culture of violence based on the nation of individual benefit at all costs and born in part from the absence of a value system. Three, predominantly landless, propertyless, and unskilled African majority, constituting more than 75% of our population. Four, an educational system that was consciously designed to produce an African majority which will have no skills. Five, the absence of a rural peasantry with access to land. Six, the creation of an entrenched social order of privilege and power. Seven, the positioning of South Africa as an economic outpost of the developed Western world. Lastly, the positioning of South Africa as other than an African country, arguing that it occupies a special place, space at the exemplary of modern human development within a pre-modern regressive African continent. As students of Tambo, we need to work to respond to these eight challenges, to build an education skill that will enable our young people to participate in the mainstream of the economy, to kill and deal with youth unemployment in our country, to play our progressive role in the African politics and the world, to also play our role to reshape and dismantle the economic apartheid that we currently still continue with as this generation. Tambo and his generation delivered freedom for us. Ours now is to change the economic patterns that came under apartheid. It is against this background, comrades, that we need to continue to learn the lessons, not only from Tambo, but also from other struggling stalwarts who participated in the pillars of the revolution. One of those was Chipiwa Muofe, who before his death, he was also a founding member of the Bold Evangelist Christian Organization. Together with the current president, Sri Ramaphosa, at Mpapula High School in 1971, the TRC final report records that Comrade Muofe was a formidable threat to apartheid forces in this region. At the time, in 1977, he was detained for 90 days at Sibasa police station, then moved to several other prisons by the died in Mataj correctional facility. To this day, we have got a cell there named after him, and we don't put any other prisoner there in Mataj because it is named after this struggle hero who, re who, who, who responded to the call of O.R. Tambo. And uh, I hope the leadership of the region will one day submit to us that we name Mataji properly. <laughs> In, uh, and there are many struggling stalwarts, but also within our generation, who responded to the pillar of internet, international work, who sacrificed their own lives, who even sacrificed their own livelihood. In this region, Amos Mbedzi was arrested and stayed for many years in Swaziland. In this current generation, he stood fighting for the liberation of the people of Swaziland. I can confirm that he is now back in South Africa. He is with us. But I can also confirm, comrades, that he's not well. He needs your prayers. He needs you to pray for him and his family to remain strong because he is really, really not well. And we are hoping that he will be able to be released while he is still breathing to walk the streets of Vembe, where he grew up, and to send a message of hope to the people in this region, in the Limpopo province, but also in the whole country, that the international pillar of, of our work that O.R. Tambo taught us is still relevant today more than even during the time of Tambo. Because we are now living in a global complex world where without international work, 
you are going to be isolated in the world of global politics. I know some in society think that the, whatever is happening in Palestine does not affect us. Whatever is happening in Ukraine does not affect us. But you will feel it when the value of the rent goes up, all the prices goes up. The value of bread goes up. A person in any part of the country feels it when the value of petrol also goes up. Hence, our international work and solidarity remains a very important pillar of our struggle. It does not matter in which part of the country you are, you must participate on this pillar of work. And for that we need to applaud Comrade Amos Mbezi who spent most of his time, his adult life, in the prisons of Switzerland. He is far behind all of us now. The day is released, he will have nothing, comrades. I hope this region will organize and welcome him and send a strong message to the people of the world, to the people of Sutherland, that we continue with our solidarity for them to attain and have a democratic order in Sutherland and also send a message of hope to the people of Palestine and to the people of the world that the people of South Africa continue to stand in solidarity with them. These are people that were called into the revolution, not by a phone call from O.R. Tambo, but they were tied by his work. And the pillars that the ANC adopted of the struggle of international work they received and responded to the call and attended to their revolutionary duty and revolutionary work. Same as some of the young people in the younger generation who responded to another pillar of the struggle of rendering the country ungovernable. We must ask ourselves as this generation, to which pillar of the struggle am I responding to as I participate in my organizational work? Is it mass, organ, mass organizational work? Is it international work? Or oh, it is a work that you believe advance the national democratic revolution? In whatever thing you do, whether you sleep or wake up, you must ask yourself every day, what am I doing? Does it advance the cause of the National Democratic Revolution? As a member of the ANC, it is an important question to ask yourself because you don't take leave. Even if you are in a tavern, you remain a respected leader or member of the ANC. The community is looking up to you. Whatever you do in that tavern must reflect the values and the character of the ANC. Even if you are in a church, Whatever you do in the church must reflect the values and character of the ANC. When people see you, they must see that this is how the leadership of the ANC behaves. Even if you are in a sports field as a leader of a soccer team, your character and behavior must show that this is a leader of the ANC. In whatever platform you are in, the ANC must be seen through you. You can't be seen like any other member of society. Any character. Where they see you, they can't believe they ask, but is this really a true reflection of our time? You must not lead society to ask that kind of a question about you. Even when you walk, society must see that the leader of the ANC is walking. In whatever thing you do, you do not take leave from being a leader or a member of the ANC. And that is what we mean when we say you are a leader of society. It does not happen by proclamation. It happens through our conduct and actions in society. That is how we will be defined and be viewed. And it is important that I agree 
with what Comrade Florence has said, that Tambo, even during difficult times, wanted to see the ANC united. There is nothing, comrades, that we will achieve if we are divided. You will be beaten even by the smallest organization that got born yesterday. They register a political party and they get 6% in the last local government elections. And not every Tom, Dick and Harry today, they now believe that no matter, this ANC does not look like it's invisible. It's because of our own conduct and character. But if we can correct ourselves, united, there is no one in this country that can beat the ANC. There is no one. There is no Tom, Dick and Harry that can just wake up two days before elections, form a political party and get to 2%. When we are here, we must, comrades, reflect as we move towards the policy conference and as we move towards the, the national conference, what values and characters from Tambo, as you will see the documents and organizational renewal, bringing back those to be embedded in the struggle and in our prosecution of the national democratic revolution. These are the values that we must continue with if we want to see the ANC live beyond us, it is those values that kept the ANC together. And it is those values that will keep it together until internal, even beyond our lives. If Tambo was able to do it, we can also be able to do it. We just need to commit ourselves again to the policy objective, to the oath that we have taken to lead this organization and ensure that we live true to its values. Tambo was able to participate with this, at a time, his generation of young comrades of Mandela, Sisulu, and others. They revolutionized the ANC, changed it into a mass-based militant and also added a pillar of the armed struggle. So the revolution will never happen, neither will the ANC be renewed without the participation of young people. Hence, I was very excited when I heard that there is a regional executive committee here of the ANC Youth League. There is nothing that you can change, comrades, from those that have already learned certain things. But the younger generation, can be able to revolutionize and change the character of the ANC. And it is against this background that it is now within our shoulders to deliver economic freedom to the people of our country, to respond to the challenges of youth unemployment, the challenges of poverty, and the challenge of inequality. We have to respond it is not undoable. And I think President Ramaphosa is capable of leading us in this direction. In a pragmatic way, in a pragmatic way, in the mood of Deng Jinping when China was at its lowest, he characterized the Chinese revolution as a, a, a socialism with Chinese characteristics. Even ourselves, we need to have our own tailor-made solutions to our unemployment challenges, to our economic growth challenges, but also the comrades of the leadership of Mbe as a region. You also have to respond to your own unique challenges in this region. I was saying to Comrade Florence, you know, hey, the ANC has grown uh, these days. You have a meeting in front of a dam like this. This is beautiful. <laughs> I mean, this is the work of a democratic government. You must proud yourself of this. When I was here at Univen, this thing was not here. We used to go to Madzivandila Agricultural College. <laughs> but today we are in front of a dam. It shows the advancement of the 
National Democratic Revolution in this part of the country, shaped by the ANC. This dam would not have been here if it was not water affairs. And there would not have been any economy around in Andoni Dam. So these are the things that we need to be proud of, comrades. I know the opposition and sometimes the media want to hammer all the negative things that are happening in the ANC and in the country. But ourselves have got the revolutionary duty to lift the positive things that we have done. South Africa is not the same as it was in 1994. This organization has changed this country for the better. But we can do more to shape and ensure that we resolve the triple challenges of our country. And these are things that ourselves as the region and the province, as we go towards the policy conference, let's shape policies and respond to the challenges that our country is facing. It is within this theoretical framework that we will have learned lessons from Tambo, because the revolution will never be driven by common sense. We can do it through our own discussion documents, through inputs, and through pragmatic solutions to the challenges that we have. The challenges of gender-based violence and the various challenges that are besieging our communities, drugs and the migration challenge. You are uniquely placed here in this region to also contribute because except the fact that you are bordering with Zimbabwe, you also have a huge number of illegal immigrants in your area. We must be able to call on law enforcement agencies to implement the immigration laws of the country, to deal with illegal, illegal immigration, and to deal with any form of criminality wherever it raises its ugly head. I know that as a Minister of Justice, we do have challenges of crime and safety in our country. Ourselves were also uniquely placed to respond to this and help shape the discourse and find practical and possible solutions to respond to the crime situation in our country. We cannot only leave it to government, but we also have a role to play. If we say police officers, they don't respond, they are corrupt, who is paying the police officer? If we say a prosecutor is corrupt, who is paying the prosecutor? It's yourselves in the communities, members of society. The money to bribe a police officer and a traffic office does not fall from heaven and just fall in the hand of the, of the traffic officer. Members of society take it out of their pockets and now want to preach that this country is corrupt. It is us as members of society who are breeding corruption. If us in society can stop to pay a bribe to a police officer, there will be no corruption to the police officer. If we stop to pay a bribe to the traffic officer, there will be no corruption to the traffic officer. It is us who can end it. It's us who have started it. It is in our hands, comrades. Let's work towards building a corruption-free society that will enable us to live in a free and a safe country. I want to conclude, comrades, by wishing you and also congratulating the leadership of the region for having hosted a peaceful regional congress of the ANC. Which was obviously contested within the constitutional parameters of the ANC. But it was dignified, it was robust, it maintained our dignity in society. That we can be able to contest each other and leave a regional congress conference with no blood on the floor or with no delegate walking naked in the streets. Whatever happens, comrades, in any regional conference in the country of the ANC or Congress of the Youth League or of the Women's League, it has got an impact on our standing in society. If delegates take off clothes,
kill delegates, even in a brand general meeting, it becomes headlines. If, if it is not headlines, it will be all over social media. It has got a huge impact on the standing of the ANC. Hence, we congratulate you for having convened a Congress that has enhanced the stature of the ANC. And we want to also wish you, as you go to the provincial conference of the ANC in the Pope, to do the same, to have a dignified provincial conference with robustness and the radicalness that is known, but it must remain dignified. We must not kill each other oppositions. We must not tear apart the ANC because of positions. But the contestation, it is within the Constitution. Let's do it in a manner that still, after the provincial conference, you will get out of the provincial conference with the ANC and still loving each other as delegates and not leave the provincial conference where you cannot even greet your neighbor who is a delegate to the same provincial conference. After the provincial conference, comrades, we must see you shaking hands like people who went into a soccer match. In a soccer match, you know, even before it starts, that there will be a winner. Hence, after the game, they, they greet each other, they accept the outcome. Even those that are angry, they don't want to be greeted. After a day, they apologize that that was an unsporting behavior. So we have a responsibility, comrades, after the provincial conference to still live together. But unfortunately, this is not a soccer match. Because in a soccer match, sometimes, if it is not a knockout competition, there is a possibility of a draw. But in this conference where you are going to, there is no possibility of a draw. The ANC must emerge with the elected leadership at the conference. And that elected leadership must be accepted by everyone. But for that to happen, our conduct, our behavior, to and in the conference will determine what will happen to the outcome and how we are going to treat each other beyond the provincial conference. I'm not saying comrades must not contest each other. They must not raise their views because comrades can raise conspiracies these days. And say, hey, Lamula came to Vembe and he gave us, he is muzzling us. He said, you must not say anything. Comrades, you must be robust as you can be. But it must be within the dignity of the ANC. Whatever robustness must happen within the confines of the Constitution. We don't want to see you on top of tables there. Some of you, we know you will get surprised, but how can this cater go on the top of a table? And some of you at home and even everywhere, you are well known to be very peaceful. Why must you go and embarrass us at the provincial conference and start to be archaic in our conference? You get surprised, but where did you get this behavior? Because this guy, we know him even in the village, he cannot even beat a head a fly. <laughs> now, because there are cameras there at the conference, you have changed your behavior. Please, comrades, help us. Let's preserve the dignity of the ANC. And that is what O.R. Tambo will have expected from us. Thank you very much. Oh, oh,